So hi and welcome to this video. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to we're going to be allowing users to actually write comments on videos. Um, so for example, here here's the comments we uh, displayed in the last video, and we're going to put a text box or a text area and uh, a submit button underneath the video, uh, just like the way just like the way YouTube does it to uh, write comments. So uh, let's get started. So as you can see, I'm on the watch.php page and I'm on um, line 55. I'm just going to make a new line. So this is line 55. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a div. And I set the style so that it's floating on the left hand side of the page. And I'm just going to write a uh, div in capital letters just so that we can uh, actually see the div. So I'm just going to refresh the page. So as you can see, uh, we have our div here on the page. It showed up in the uh, place we expected it to. So I'm going to go back in our text editor now. And we're going to create a form. So we're going to uh, delete the div uh, text and we're just going to replace it with a form. And we're going to set the form action to the URL of the page, which in this case is the full URL, including the um, video ID. So we're just going to uh, copy and paste this for now. And we'll uh, replace this and make it dynamic in a minute. And then the next thing we need to do after the action is we need to specify the form method. And it's going to be post because we're sending data to a web server like uh, we're going to insert it into a database, so uh, we need to set it to post. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text area. And I'm going to give it a name of um, write comment. Um, and as well as that, since it's a text area, we need to add rows and columns. So we just need to specify those. So the rows are um, how many down, for example. So that's the height of the, uh, this is the height of the uh, text area. And columns is how many across the text area is. So obviously we want less rows and columns. So that way it's a rectangle. So if I said five rows and 10 columns, we should get a rectangle. So we did get a rectangle, albeit a very small one. So we'll make it bigger. So we'll give it uh, maybe 50 rows and 20 columns, maybe, or uh, 50 columns and 20 rows. So let's refresh and see what happens. So if we scroll down, we can see that's way too tall. It's um, maybe a wee bit uh, too uh, short, or uh, I mean, it's not wide enough. So we'll just maybe give 55 columns and 10 rows. So this is just basically trial and uh, trial and error to find out the uh, the best um, height of it. So it's maybe make it seven, maybe seven rows and fifty seven columns, just because we need to try and make it as wide as the video, and maybe fifty six. So that's uh, close enough. And then obviously we need to push this down afterwards. So what we're gonna do is. We're going to set the width of this div, whoops, of the div containing the um, the text area to 100%. That way it will, even the, the text area will stay the same, but the div containing it will fill this whole little space here and it will force this, uh, the yeah, comment to be pushed underneath it. So as you can see, if we scroll down, as uh, the uh, comment was pushed below. Uh, so now we have our text area. We need to actually make the submit button. So uh, now I think about it, we'll actually give it less columns. So we'll give it 50 columns maybe. Because we need some room for our submit button. Uh, maybe we'll wait, maybe even less than that, 45. So we're going to put the submit button alongside the, um, the uh, text area on the right hand side of it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go underneath and we're going to create an input type of submit. We're going to give it a name of post comment. 
and we're going to give it a value of um, post comment. So as you can see now, if we refresh, this should be alongside it, but it's at the bottom. And we want it to sort of be as tall as the um, text area. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a style attribute to it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to give it a height of maybe 100 pixels and see what that looks like. Okay, uh, oh yeah, we need to uh, actually write height. And as you can see, it sort of gave it a height. It gave it a height of 100 pixels, but it isn't. It's still uh, positioned at the bottom of the uh, page. So what we can do to fix that is really simple. We can just give it an attribute of float left. So it should uh, make it float alongside the text area. And as you can see, it did push it up to the top. It's not quite tall enough, and it did push it float on the left hand side but that's on the wrong side of the text area now so that's really simple to fix all we have to do is in the text area give it a style attribute as well and tell it to float left as well and since the text area element is above the um, submit button in the page or uh, in the code it should uh, float it to the left first and then float the um, post comment button it should basically just push this button on the other side of the uh, text area because it will, what it'll do is it'll see the uh, text area because it's, abo it's uh, above the uh, button in the code so it reads everything top down so it'll read this first and it'll say float this to the left so it floats that to the left first and then it reads this afterwards and it says float this to the left but this is already floating in the, in the uh, place so it can't float it to the very edge of the page so it pushes it alongside uh, the text area so we might need maybe 120 pixels, maybe that's a wee bit too much, but let's find out. So that looks about right, that's actually perfect. Um, and we'll actually give it a width of... Uh, we could, uh, okay, we'll leave the width of the button the same because it might look a bit too skinny otherwise. And we'll just decrease the columns to 42 maybe. Uh, 43 maybe. Okay, so that's close enough. So now we have our form. What we're going to do is we're going to add some PHP code to actually submit it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to actually write a comment so we know what's going on. So um, comment um, post code. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say if is set post uh, the, the post, uh, the reason the post has a dollar sign then an underscore um, and then the capital letters is because this is called a global variable so it's um, sort of a type of variable that's kind of reserved um, which is why it starts with an underscore even though usually you can't start variables with underscores uh, and what this basically is is just PHP's reserved variable for um, post or getting post data from a form and what we need to give it is the uh, value of the uh, submit button. So what it does is it just checks is the submit button uh, pressed. So is it has data from the submit button been sent? And then what we're going to do is if it has, we're just going to say die. Uh, we're just going to say comment posted for now. And then if we refresh again and click post comment, it says comment posted. Um, I'm not quite sure why it didn't work the way we expected it to, but it doesn't matter because that was just a test and our data is still being sent. So what we need to do now is we know since we know the data has been sent, we need to actually uh, pick up the data. So what we're going to say is get the value of the text area. And that's why we gave it a name write comment. So we're just going to say comment text equals post um, write comment and then what we want to do is we want to uh, do this thing called sanitizing um, data which just basically means um, making sure people can't post malicious things into it so people couldn't um, post an asset or a MySQL query as the comment and then uh, make changes to our database. 
and so that people can post like PHP code and things that would mess up our website. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say MySQL rail escape string, and it's a function. So we surround that. Fu we surround. Um, we surround the uh, write comment post data in the uh, MySQL rate escape string function. And what this function does is it just uh, escapes um, characters in a string that can be used in MySQL injection. So that way it's just sort of a, pre a way to prevent MySQL injection into your database. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say strip tags, which just basically removes any tags from any posted data. So that way people can't submit tags. Um, whenever uh, they're writing a comment. So the next one we're going to use is HTML um, entities. And we're going to surround that uh, around the uh, post data. So what this does is it um, converts all HTML codes or characters uh, to um, their sort of special character. So what I mean by that is, for example, a less than sign uh, the HT has a HTML code of and lt uh, semicolon. So what that's what this will do is, if it sees a less than sign, it converts it to an uh, an and an and lt uh, semicolon, and that's useful just because it stops people being able to um, get around the um, strip tags thing and uh, inject things in our database because they if for example since php starts with a all php tags start with a less than sign this would immediately stop it because if uh, whenever it saw it it would convert the uh, less than sign into that and then that's not a valid php uh, opening block so that wouldn't actually ex be able to execute any php code and the final one we want is trim and this just uh, removes spaces or uh, leading and ending spaces from the end of the comment so that we're not so people can't post like blank comments and if someone starts a comment with loads of loads of spaces and then writes this is a comment the only thing that actually gets uh, entered into the database is the this is a comment part so that after we've done that what we need what we can do is we can just say uh, uh, mysql query uh, insert uh, into uh, our database, which is video box, the values, and I'm just going to go into PHP my admin and find out the uh, the layout of the table. So here's the layout of our table. We have five different columns, so we need five different art, um, uh, values in the query. First one's ID, so we can leave it blank. Second one is user comment, and which is going to be the user name of whoever's logged in. So in our case, I believe it's uh, it's user is the uh, variable name we used. So we'll use that for uh, getting the user who commented. The comment is going to just be comment text, and the date posted is going to be. Um, let me just. Uh, Checked it, posted okay on video ID. So video ID we can just actually use the video ID variable. And then we can just say date commented. And then we just create this variable up here. So that's not that hard. All we do is create um a variable called date commented equals the date function. And then we just lay it out the way we normally would. So um so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to say d, which just basically a small d in the uh, date function just basically means um, the date. So for example, today is the 4th of July 2013. So the small d just means, in this case, it would be 04. The uh, next one we want is a space and then an f, like a capital F. Uh, so what this would do is we put a space because we used a space in the formatting. And the capital F just means the month, so in this case we would say July. And then finally we want a capital Y. And then this, we we'll just put another space and then the year, which is 2013. So that is how the date would be represented in our database. So that's it for the um, comment code. So let's actually see does it work. So let's post a comment. Post 
uh, and it refreshes the page and as you can see we actually refresh uh, let's have a look in the database okay so something didn't work and our comment didn't get added um, Okay, so the reason we it didn't work is because we used insert into video box, and that's not actually the name of the table. The name of the table is comments. Video box is the database. So let's try it now. So we'll just write test comment again. Post, uh, refresh. I mean, scroll down and refresh. As you can see, we have two comments now. Except we have a slight bug with the uh, comment form being shown twice, but that's not hard to fix. And the uh, other thing we need to fix just really quickly is this, which isn't hard. We just replace this with PHP echo video ID. That's it sorted. And the other one we want to fix is the comment form being shown more than once. So to fix this, what we're going to do is... What we're going to do is we're just going to copy all this and move it up above and just paste it in here. And now, if we refresh, we get the comments displayed twice the two comments and then the video, the comment box is only once. So let's just try it again. Another comment, post. Oh, we actually have to refresh. And there we have our, uh, another comment, except for some reason it's being posted twice. Okay, so we'll just undo all this and then leave it there. So now if we refresh, we'll actually get a load of comment boxes. And unfortunately, I've just run out of time in this video, so we'll fix that in the next video because uh, we're about, just about to run out of time. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.